Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Fix Show. Today in studio, we have our very own Gilbert Kumpukwe for a second time. And we are going to talk about Facebook Messenger bots and how you can use it to your advantage in order to drive more leads in sales. But before I introduce Gilbert, I want to quickly tell everybody, and I think Gilbert didn't even know this, we have our first sponsor on the show. Um, the Digital School of Marketing, which we are very excited about. Yeah, that's awesome. So it made a lot of sense. We obviously talk about digital marketing and marketing as a whole, but predominantly digital. And uh, the Digital School of Marketing was kind enough to say, look, what we're going to do is we're going to give away one course every month worth 11500 bucks to anybody listening. So from our side, I think... That is pretty exciting. So just to let you know, the Digital School of Marketing is one of South Africa's preferred provided accredited digital marketing education courses are accredited both locally and internationally. You can stand a chance to win a digital marketing course each valued at 11500 bucks. So from our side, all you have to do is listen, sign up in order to obviously get notified about new shows. And if you wanted to learn more about digital marketing, then the Digital School of Marketing is where you can go. Cool. So, Gilbert, welcome to the studio again. Thank you very much for having me. Whew, I feel like it's my first time though. I don't know, getting sweaty and hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just because it is warm in here yep. because, of the, because of the heater. But nonetheless, thanks for coming through. Um, well, all the way through from our office yeah, to here. Exactly, <laughs> five meters away. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, man. It's, it's a real pleasure to have you here. And I want to talk about Facebook Messenger bots. This is episode 11, and we've talked about all kinds of things. Um, in episode 3, I think we've talked about e-commerce marketing. Uh, we've talked about Facebook ads. We've talked about um, you know marketing strategy as a whole, creative strategy, building websites. And I thought Facebook Messenger bots is one thing that we haven't really touched on yet, and maybe a lot of people even maybe have no idea what it actually is. So I thought we need to bring it onto the show. We need to tell people what it is all about and how they can obviously leverage it in order to generate leads and generate sales because it's very possible to do that with it, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, and you're right. We haven't, I think, chatted about it. So I think it'll be exciting. I, I always like to talk about chatbots as, um, simply put, an automated assistant. That's how I explain it. So if for those that don't know anything about chatbots, um, today you'll learn a bit about that, but it is essentially an automated assistant that helps you with lead generation, helps you with engaging your customers and providing an experience for them. And um, overall, it just helps you with um, getting giving a different brand experience without necessarily having to do all the manual labor yourself. No, exactly. And I think it's like having an automated 24-7 sales assistant on Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Artificial intelligence uh, doesn't sleep. Uh, there's no human error. Mm -hmm. There are technical well, errors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes as we've experienced, especially with Facebook. Um, but that's more of the Facebook beast that keeps growing and keeps obviously changing. And the APIs, it needs to be obviously updated. So... We obviously have a lot of clients using Facebook Messenger chatbots and essentially I want to just clarify that we are going to talk about Facebook Messenger bots and not just chatbots as a whole because it's two different things essentially, right? Maybe just articulate the difference there for us. With chatbots and Facebook messaging, there are two different things. I think chatbots, I think a good example would be the ones that you find on a website. Uh, it's somebody you can chat to, um, somebody that is almost like they, it's mainly used for customer service. When it comes to Facebook messaging, this happens purely on Facebook, but the capabilities of Facebook Messenger is much more robust, um, but also at the same time, it can be used for various other methods besides just as a customer service tool. So I think a lot of the chatbots are generally used for customer service. But with Facebook Messenger, it's about nurturing um, potential individuals that are interested in your brand. It's about actually helping you build a brand through a messaging platform that a lot of people have come to become accustomed to using. And what you also find in these message in Facebook Messenger is the ecosystem is very different from a chatbot. Here you'll find, you know, people using GIFs and emojis and the conversations that are actually happening there. It's it's actually a fun interactive little tool. Um, and it, it's something that potentially you don't even expect it to be that way. 
but it does differentiate a bit from a, just a live chat that you have on a website. It's almost like just simply talking to a sales rep versus here, you're actually engaging much more deeper with the brand and then what it stands for. Yeah, also people, I think, you know, we are not necessarily aware of this. Uh, we are because we in the space quite close, uh, you know, to where everything is happening. But a lot of people don't know that Facebook Messenger bots, but is obviously one element of bots or is instant messaging. You get WhatsApp, WeChat, uh, Telegram, uh, you've got Facebook Messenger, but instant messaging as a whole, that has surpassed social media usage back in 2015 already. And I think people know social media is big. And when you talk about digital strategy, you incorporate social media because it's a big element of digital marketing. But people don't know that instant messaging has surpassed social media usage in 2015. And it's currently, you know, just actually, it keeps, it's basically growing continuously. Um, so with that said, I think just to put things in perspective, like social media marketing is really important, but the fact that more people are actually using instant messages, uh, platforms like WhatsApp and Messenger and all these other, you know, WeChats and, and Telegrams of the world kind of puts things in perspective to where the attention is going. And ideally as an advertiser, wherever the attention is going, that's where you want to go. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, interesting, you know, you say that. I think it's also just a, a thing of uh, potentially my, my uh, views on it is also the fact that individuals have um, are looking more towards these closed ecosystems. They're looking for privacy. And, you know, there's a lot that's always been happening lately, especially with Facebook and privacy policies and et cetera. So I think what's happening is that a lot of the people are kind of straying away a bit from these platforms because they're also worried about data and privacy and et cetera. And they're looking for closed ecosystems. And it's not just apps. It's not just these messaging apps. Even face, um, closed Facebook groups. There's a lot of interaction happening there now because it's almost like I don't want to be exposed. I don't want my data to be exposed. So I'm going to push myself and put myself in a, in a more closed ecosystem. So that, I think, has also contributed to the fact that we're seeing more people now using the messaging platforms. But again, it's also, uh, I think, a, a, a place where people are being able to engage more freely within these platforms and it's become a natural a day-to-day -day thing. Think about WhatsApp. How many times do you look at your WhatsApp on a day-to-day? -day? Um, because of the popularity of it and because it just becomes as a natural sort of habit for people to engage with, no, more, no longer are you, you talking over the phone and calling someone. It's always like, I'm just going to WhatsApp someone quickly or I'm just going to Facebook message someone quickly. So it's become like a habit almost. And I think that's also been the rise now in, in the popularity of these messaging apps. No, for sure. And I think also Seth Godin, who's a marketing guru, right? Well, he's quite philosophical, but like one of the elements, um, you know, I would say of his expertise or one of the things of his expertise is obviously marketing as well. He's written numerous books on marketing. Um, and one of the things he talks about is conversational marketing, like obviously how that is taking over. We don't, we're not living in a world where you have to push your messaging anymore because people are becoming immune to that. So it's about having an actual conversation, empathetic conversation and how you can help the actual end user. And that's essentially what these messaging apps allow you to do, right? So now it's, you know, segueing into the conversations, but now with businesses they're also able to engage in these conversations through Facebook Messenger, through WhatsApp for Business. And it's trying to create and, and, and use those platforms um, for that specific thing. It's about the brand experience, but except now with the conversational element to it, which is, you know, what, which we've led into now in this era of, of marketing. It is about the conversational. So I'm now having conversations with my brand in Messenger um, and in WhatsApp or any other, these other closed ecosystems. And that's what's essentially happening. You're absolutely right. And I think on top of that, just to build on that, people are not necessarily aware that if someone is in that closed environment talking to your brand, it is technically a direct marketing channel for them. So we look at a, a direct marketing channel as SMS marketing where you have someone's details and you can directly communicate with that person. Email, for example, we've got an email list and you can email everybody directly and they can choose to obviously respond or not. On social media, you don't have that. You communicate, you telling Facebook, I want to communicate with this demographic and you hope that you find the right people. 
obviously through tactics um, and understanding the platform's sophisticated artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities, obviously you can you know laser target who you want to reach, but that doesn't necessarily give you a personal relationship with that person. And what messenger, what messenger and other messaging apps allows you to do as a brand is that you have now a direct form of contact and you now are starting to build a direct relationship with somebody. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand that. Absolutely. And I think that's the one advantage as well. Well, one of the other advantages that you maybe didn't mention um, is the fact that you now have them in a closed ecosystem. Less distractions. Yeah, you can, as you mentioned, direct communications to them. Also, direct communications means you don't have to keep paying anymore to then talk to the individual that you have because they're right there in your database, in Facebook Messenger, which means you are allowed to, so there's something called broadcasts. If you ever wanted to reach out to these individuals that have come into your Facebook Messenger, you can simply send out a broadcast and that then they would be able to receive your messages and of course engage with them. But now you're not pay one, you're not paying for um, uh, this, this customer's attention because you already have them in your ecosystem. But two, they're less distracted because it's a direct communication. When, when you send a message, they receive, hopefully you obviously get a notification if the notification is turned on and they're able to click and obviously open up the, the message. So now you've got, Two advantages there. And the fact that you've got them in your communication channel, you can now nurture these relationships depending on how they interact, of course, with the messages that you're sending to them. And obviously, we'll get to that soon. But you have an advantage above going and just running these ad campaigns and hoping that you know somebody clicks and likes or follows you. But you will still have to keep trying to probably um, pay more to keep getting their attention. But you don't want to keep paying more. You want to I want this person to be part of my ecosystem when I can communicate to them as often as I want to at a lower, um, cost. At a lower cost. Exactly. So these are the advantages of having these, these messaging tools or, or Facebook Messenger and having an ecosystem that you've set up so that you can constantly communicate with people uh, on a daily or weekly or however often you wish to do so. No, exactly. And I think the important thing is there is that you pay to play on Facebook and Google and all these other social media networks. Now, in essence, you want to lower the cost of your communication to a prospect. And that's what Messenger and email and SMS technically allows you to do because you pay once to get someone into that database. And then essentially, let's say it costs you 10 Rand for someone to opt in to the email list that you have or the contact list that you have. The next time you communicate with that individual, it's going to cost you much lower because now you're not paying Facebook, you're paying the email service. And if you work out the amount of emails that you can send for the price that you're paying, it's cheaper than running certain ads and certain platforms. And I think that's, that's one of the things that uh, you know is really, really important to understand is that you want to lower your costs when it comes to communicating with your target audience and your prospects. You want to bring them into an ecosystem that you control versus being you know, in a situation where Facebook, like we've seen it, an ad account gets disabled. Now you can't advertise. Um, a Facebook page gets flagged or something happens. I usually use the analogy of building a house versus or buying a house versus renting a house. Because if you're on Facebook and you're on Google, you're technically renting. And the landlord can kick you out at any time. Yep, He can be like, you know what? I'm not happy with how you've been treating, you know, my property uh, and there's one or two things that I'm not happy with therefore I'm going to put someone else in here you need to be out in the next 30 days now you've got your bum in the street and you've got nowhere to go but if it was your house that you bought you could do whatever you want and nobody can kick you out and that's kind of like the difference between just running ads on social media versus having your own SMS list email list messenger list one thing I want to ask you maybe just to explain to everybody is like what is the best way to go about starting with Facebook Messenger? So there's obviously so certain software tools that people can use. Um, can you walk us through what software tool you, you you suggest? And then maybe just how is it, I mean, I mean, is it really difficult to connect? Can anybody do it themselves? Maybe just walk us through that process. Absolutely. So up until recently, I would have said, right, you're going to go and get this tool and this is what you need to be using from here on out because it's the best tool that is out there. But I'm um, now in two minds about that, <laughs> depending on obviously, you know, what, what it is you're trying to achieve. So 
historically, we, well, as an agency, we use a lot of tools. And um, as you rightly so, one of them is um, these, these messaging tools. These messaging tools connect with Facebook Messenger. There's a very popular tool called ManyChat. And ManyChat is a tool that you can then use to create uh, your first messaging bot, if you will. Um, but as I mentioned, up until recently, I would have said, go and try out ManyChat because it's also one of the the more affordable ones. It's about ten dollars for five hundred subscribers. So these these platforms charge according to the number of subscribers that you have in your messaging platform. Okay, so if in your uh, Facebook Messenger you have five hundred people, then a tool like ManyChat will charge you ten dollars for that five hundred people, and it scales according to how many people um, continue to uh, enter your Messenger platform. But recent, not not recently, but in the last couple of months, what Facebook has done is it started investing in its own technology. And what its own technology is doing is what the many chat would be able to do, which is, for example, if you wanted to collect leads, you would set up a tool like many chat. You would be able to uh, some there's a there's a um, a, seg a segment called growth tools within ManyChat, and what growth tools is it allows you to choose specific almost like specific goals. So if you say I want to generate uh, leads, it's essentially going to allow you to be able to set up that specific bot in order for you to generate leads, which means that you can set up a welcome message. And then in that welcome message, you can get people to click a button to say, let's say, for example, learn more. And in that learn more, you can then ask them for certain information, their name, their email, the phone number, whatever it is that you require. And then that's a way of you to capture the leads. Now, what, what then would happen is you would, for example, run a Facebook ad. And if someone sees your, your ad, it says you can have a call to action that says send message. And you even have the messenger logo. And then when someone sends a message, your um, Facebook, they open up in their messaging platform, which is Facebook Messenger. And that's when they can start interacting with that bot that you've set up through the growth tool. Now, currently, you're also able to do the same thing, except without having to use a tool like ManyChat. On Facebook, they, because as I mentioned, they've started investing heavily on their own platform that they are now allowing you to generate those same leads that you would have used ManyChat by just simply using Facebook itself. Because now it allows you to also have the same welcome message. Um, if someone interacts, then you're allowed to collect their details and then all of that gets stored within, within, your, your, within Facebook Messenger itself. So when it comes to using a tool like ManyChat, it gets stored on ManyChat. But now you can actually have that um, those details stored right there off of Facebook Messenger. We haven't used that option as much because uh, I mean a lot of a lot of the different um, strategies and, and and setups that we've had is mainly through ManyChat because ManyChat has is so robust. Um, I think even though Facebook is investing a lot more in its technology, it's not quite at the level of the, the, the certain things that you can do with a tool like ManyChat or ChatFuel or whatever. So at this stage, it's still, it does, it gets the basics right, um, but you can't do a lot more other things that a tool would allow you to do. I'm assuming the Facebook option is free. Yes. The, the, yeah. So a safe uh, conclusion to make is that if you obviously don't have any money mm -hmm. to spend on your marketing, go and experiment with the Facebook feature that is available yes. and if you're looking for something a bit more robust and a bit more sophisticated for ten dollars a month you can have some a look at many chat yes exactly in my own experience i think many chat is quite intuitive to use um obviously there are some really hardcore stuff that can be done and it gets quite complex and there's stuff that's obviously above my pay grade but there's also very basic stuff that anybody can go and do and set up like for example a welcome message which we'll talk about just now my question is, um, as a business now who knows nothing about Messenger marketing, nothing about mini chat, it's quite easy to set up a Facebook page. We all know that. And I think most people do have Facebook pages. But the big question or the burning question probably now is like, how do I connect my Facebook page with this bot that is sitting on another platform? Mm. So 
the way you'd go about doing it is because of the very simple integration that a tool like MiniChat would allow you to, to have is once you sign up to MiniChat, it will actually prompt you to connect with your Facebook page. So the steps are, like you said, they're very intuitive. So it will it allow you to, once you're setting up the mini chat account, it then actually prompts you to please open up your Facebook and then so that it can be able to go and look at your Facebook page and how to connect it that way. So it's very intuitive. Um, the moment you open up your Facebook and you're on your own profile, it will already be able to detect the pages that are attached to your profile. And then it will say, it will actually say something like, is this the page that you want to connect to your Facebook profile? And then you click yes, for example, and then it, it seamlessly just integrates just that, like that. So it's a very simple one, two, three step process. Um, and you'll be able to see it in the steps themselves. It's not very, yeah, it's not difficult. Tell me quickly, and for the Facebook free option, where do where do you find that? Because I actually don't know that. All. I really don't well, know. Well, if you're doing the free option, remember, if you've set up an ad account and it's already linked to your Facebook, book business or it should be your ad account should be linked to your business page um it should automatically already register that you're you've got this ad account and you're running for this specific business so automatically it should already register that you know this is the business that you want to run these these uh, facebook messenger ads to mm. yeah so okay so this is when you actually in ads manager and not in, on your facebook page oh uh, yes let's differentiate that so you need to be going into the ads manager, which you can enter through your Facebook business manager. If you go to Facebook business manager and you log in, then you get to the ad, um, the business manager, but you need to log into your ad account in your business manager. <laughs> okay, so it's, we say the back end of Facebook and this is where all the advertising happens. And that's where you'll be able to get this feature um, in terms of running your lead ads or, or uh, Facebook Messenger ads, sorry, specifically. So you have to go into the ads manager and then when you're setting up your ads, you'll be able to choose an option called messages. And that's where um, you'll be able to set up this Facebook Messenger campaign. And you're talking about the objective that you choose. Yes, sorry. So yes, when you are now setting up the actual ad and you are choosing the objective, if it is to drive people to Facebook Messenger, you are actually going to choose the objective messages. It gives you different options, WhatsApp and Instagram direct, but essentially you want Facebook Messenger, you'll be able to see the different options. Uh, you choose mess Facebook Messenger and then it will show direct you to, uh, it will direct individuals to your messaging platform. So the, the next question then is, um, if you if we're going to go with the example of many chat, and I think there's a couple of others, Mobile Monkey, I know it's one. Yes. There's a chat fuel. Um, and if you guys, you know, need to go check it out, chatfuel.com, I, I think, I assume, actually. Manychat.com, I know, is the web URL that we use. And Mobile Monkey, just Google that and try and find that. But I think we obviously use Manychat. Most of our clients are using that as well. Um, and like you said, it's quite intuitive, so you can go and set it up and connect your Facebook page. But the next question is, if someone now messages your Facebook page, and you don't have many chat connected, that won't necessarily help you build up a direct marketing list like we've discussed. Because we did say that if someone messages your page, they are technically forming part of, of this uh, ecosystem that you want. Obviously, you want to build up a messenger list. So I think my question is, how do people go about building up this? So we know how to build up email lists and, and I think a lot of business owners understand. I can drive people to a landing page, I can ask for the email, that's going to get stored in MailChimp and then in MailChimp I can access that data and I can obviously send a campaign. So I want to maybe just kind of like break down how do you actually go about doing that in, you know, from a many chat perspective for Facebook Messenger. So how do someone enter the list? How do you access that data and how do you then you know, send them that broadcast campaign that you've chatted about earlier. Yes, yes. So with ManyChat, when you set it up, um, let's say you wanted to set up a simple welcome message, okay? There's two things here. There's the unpaid side of things and then there's the paid side of things. So if let me start maybe with the unpaid side of things. Okay, obviously you're paying for ManyChat, but what I'm trying to get at is you mentioned messaging the page directly, okay? You can prompt mini chat to start a conversation if someone does 
message your page directly, which is now like the unpaid side. Like I just go to your Facebook page and I, you know, click uh, send message. And then that can be connected to ManyChat. You've obviously gone in and set up your welcome message. Um, and maybe you would like people to explore a bit about your products. So if someone does engage with that um, first message, you can write a message saying, hi, I'm John's bot. Um, welcome to our page. I would love to assist you in some way. Just click learn more below to find out about our, all our products. And then if they click learn more, then of course, you know, the, the second message will show up and depending on what you want to give them as content, you can set that up so that it presents it to them. So that can happen. And the, you can specify that I want this to be my welcome message on my Facebook page. So if someone engages, sends me a message, just randomly finds my page and they send me a message, this is what's going to happen because I've set up the automated bot. So if you've got your own clothing store, Gilbert's Apparel, whatever, if I go to your Facebook page, there's going to be a little chat thing that pops up. Is that what you're saying? Or do I have to actually go and, and say send message? I want to ask this page a message. So when you go onto the page, you'll see underneath a profile image. Send message. That, yes. Again, you can obviously change those call to actions, but... You want send it to be send message. Yes, because yeah. I guess psychologically as well, when you think send message, you know it's going to be some kind of conversation happening. So if you make that send message, then I can have my bot respond to you because I've obviously connected it through ManyChat and I said specified that I want this to be my welcome message. Then the interaction will start happening with you um, via your mobile phone. So I'm going to go to Gilbert's or, apparel message. I'm going to say uh, Gilbert send message. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say like, do you have item, you know, hashtag 667 in red. And then it's going to, and then you can choose what that welcome message is going to be. It could be automated to say something like, hi, first name, uh, thank you for your inquiry. So a representative will reach out to you, you know, as soon as possible, just so that someone knows that that comment has been received or that message has been received and it's going to be attended to as quickly as possible. That's yes. what I'm hearing you say. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you would obviously, so one thing you can do with ManyChat is set up certain keywords. The bot will be able to respond to certain keywords. So if you said, for example, how much does this cost? Then it will see cost. And depending on how you want, um, either you want the bot to respond or you want a human being to respond. If someone asks for cost, then what you can do is you can say, if someone has cost in their sentence when they engage with my bot, I want to be notified. So if John, if Gilbert is there as I'm the owner, um, the moment someone types in how, how much does this cost, I will actually get a notification basically saying someone did something in Facebook Messenger that requires your attention. Mm -hmm. Then I know, oh, someone just um, asked about cost. I need to go into Facebook Messenger and take a look at uh, what that is. Well, in this case, because you, you're using ManyChat, you can go into ManyChat and you can actually see that conversation. Okay, so in yeah. ManyChat, it basically mirrors all the conversations that are happening on Facebook. Absolutely. So ManyChat is your essentially like your dash messaging platform, uh, almost like your customer relationship platform now. And it does mimic what's happening on Facebook within this uh, ManyChat dashboard. So you'll be able to see all the conversations that are happening on in Facebook on ManyChat. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if someone says cost then yes, you can notify the respected person, but you can also set a, a, an automated reply message. Yes. So for example, if someone says cost, what does this cost? And he picks up the, and, and the bot picks up cost or costs or price or anything like that. You can have a default reply that's triggered on that keyword. So it's a, if you're inquiring about cost, maybe email us here or if yes. you you know if you are inquiring about cost for this item, um, maybe contact this person as the best person to contact, or here's our hotline. Give us a call. Yeah. So essentially, there could be some form of reply, and yeah. I think one thing is pretty cool. What what is cool about that automated reply there, specifically based on the keyword, is because now if you are a location based store, and you are in a specific area, people would might want to ask where are you based. So you can literally have the bot reply if the moment they say location, we are based, um, you know, where, pick up the word where or something like that. You can say maybe pick up the word where and location or located, whatever. And then the bot can just say, 
wondering where we're located, this is where we are. And maybe have a link to a Google map or, or something like that where people can find yeah. it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. You can do all okay. of that. Exactly. Exactly that. So um, you can also do that, obviously, with the paid side of things. But to talk a bit about the paid side of things, let's say we're now trying to grow this database of ours. We want to grow this marketing channel of ours. The only way to potentially grow it to exponential rate is by running ads. Okay. So again, you would go into a tool like ManyChat and you would set up these welcome the welcome message and a follow-up when someone engages with that welcome message. If I wanted to get people to know about my business, for example, I'm, I, I, I'm a new brand, uh, I don't really have you know, much credibility yet and I would love it for people to come and start learning a bit about my business so that I could nurture them. And hopefully, you know, after a few weeks or a few months or whatever the case may be, once I've nurtured them, they'll be interested in what I have to offer. So let's say I want to grow this database and I want to start having some contact details and numbers and, and names and et cetera. What I would do then is I would set up in ManyChat, I'd say, okay, let me set up a welcome message when someone interacts with this bot for the first time. After they've engaged, let's say they click learn more as a button, then I'm going to present them with information about, um, you know, what this business is about, uh, why it's unique. Um, maybe I, I just want to show them a, a webinar, for example, even if I want, if let's say you had a webinar and you wanted to actually, you wanted to sign people up to a webinar, you could also do that within ManyChat itself. So let's say I was using a webinar as an example to grow my database. Then what I would do, is I would set up this um, messaging in ManyChat, right? But then I would then need to go into Facebook Ads Manager and set up an ad. Link that ad to the Facebook messaging uh, uh, sequence that I've is now set up as lead generation. Let's call it lead generation. I've set it up in ManyChat and I just called it lead generation. So lead generation is obviously tied to the different uh, responses and the sequence that I might have uh, already set up after someone engages with my bot. So what I'm going to then do is when I go into Facebook and I'm setting up an ad and I click messages objective and I choose Facebook Messenger, I will then connect that with ManyChat. Okay. When you're at the ad level, okay, you are going, there's actually a, it's a bit of a code, like it's kind of hard to explain it, but there's a code tied to. That Facebook the, gives you. Yes. Or that ManyChat gives you. No, 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 ManyChat gives, gives you a code. And then you need to take that code and then go into Ads Manager. So what I'm hearing it. you say is that, okay, you want to connect, because what we're trying so to we do connect, here, yes. we want to connect the Facebook ads yes. with ManyChat. Exactly. So that if we run an ad that prompts people to send the page message, that person will then be stored in the many chat database yes, yes. as someone who's messaged your page and someone who's essentially now a subscriber who you can communicate to directly in the future. Absolutely. So I just want to take a step back before we go further. Just put a pin in that. Um, the question I asked you know, a little bit earlier was, it's very important to use a software tool like ManyChat purely because of the fact that if you do not use ManyChat, you don't have a direct marketing list that you can send broadcast messages to on a weekly basis because there's no feature on Facebook that allows you to just go and message every single person that's messaged your page in the last year. Yes, you're right. So for those listening, it's really essential that if you do want to build up a direct marketing list, it's important to have a tool or connect a tool like ManyChat or Mobile Monkey with your page, which is quite intuitive as we've discussed. And what that is going to allow you to do is actually store that person's information. Not his email or contact number unless you ask for it, but it's going to store his you know, ID or username or some form of whatever data Facebook's use, uh, Facebook's using. And that's going to allow you to then send the message to that person in future the same way you would do SMS marketing and email marketing. So I think that was one of the questions that I heard earlier is like, can you you can't necessarily tap into this direct database unless you've connected a tool like ManyChat. So it's all good and well to go for the free option in terms of sending people to Messenger through the ad platform by running those ads, but you won't be able to communicate with those people on a weekly basis and actually lower your communication costs, like we've discussed prior, you know, to to the conversation. Um, all right. So to pick off where we've kind of like put a pin in things, 
we are now trying to connect the Facebook ads that we're trying to run with ManyChat so that if someone clicks on your ad, uh, they basically get stored in ManyChat. And the reason we want to run ads, from what I'm hearing you say, is that you obviously want to run ads because the organic way of getting people into ManyChat is quite tough. It's not that easy. Absolutely. Um, and we can maybe talk about some organic tactics and then some paid tactics, but let's finish off uh, the paid side of things. So you're talking about the fact that we're creating this Facebook ad. We want to prompt people to enter this list of ours. There's a piece of code that ManyChat will give you once you've chosen the correct objective in ManyChat. That piece of code you put into the Facebook ads platform and that will somehow then communicate with ManyChat. So every single time someone clicks on the ad, they will be stored in ManyChat AKA, you know, very similar to how they would be stored in MailChimp or in an uh, yeah. email tool. Exactly. So okay. I was just talking, referring to the connection there. Once that happens, once you've connected it, then when someone does engage with your ad and does click send message and they start engaging with your ad from the first message and they click learn more, um, and once they receive that second message, depending on what you want to happen, Maybe you have a video you want them to watch and then after the video, you're going to ask them for their information because you'd like to ask them to join your, your database so that you can enroll them into a webinar. Then you can ask those questions um, in your follow-up uh, message. But essentially, you would want to have that connection set up. After the connection, someone engages with your ad, they click send message, they engage with your bot saying click learn more. And then they watch a video and then you can ask them for their details. And those details, once they've submitted them, get stored within the ManyChat platform and you'll be able then to go into ManyChat and take a look at all the people that have responded and all their details, name, number, whatever you ask for is going to be stored there. Cool. And, and that's obviously the paid side of things. So if you want to run Facebook ads to drive people into your messenger list, which you've now discussed, you can't do if you don't have a platform like ManyChat then that will be the way to do it. And I think that is through the use of something called growth tools, which I want to touch on uh, just now. Um, the organic side of things. So, and I mean like the free version, like, uh, or, or how do you essentially get people into this direct marketing list without really having to give Facebook your money? That's kind of like what it comes down to. So we've now said that is, the nice thing about paid ads is that you can see how much it's costing you to get someone into your database. So that's cool because now you can see if you've got a thousand rand a month, two thousand rand a month, five, ten grand a month, and it's costing you two rand to get or three or five, we've seen that. What are the average costs like these days in terms of getting someone into these lists? If you obviously have good looking ads and a good offer, what are some average costs? Yeah, so some average costs are actually around, you're probably looking at anywhere between, I'd say between Three rand to about six rand for a messaging re reply. Um, assuming, assuming your ads are very good and you know you're actually getting good response rates on the ads themselves. But yes, generally around three to six, seven rand you can get a messaging reply. Those are our benchmarks, I would say, right? Or I'm looking at just like across industry. Yes, okay. yes, you'd want to look at say three to seven rand somewhere there. And yeah. what, what is our benchmark these days? Like, is there a number that we would... Five rand, nothing more than five rand. Okay. Yeah, because then uh, from what, I've, what we've, I mean, after running quite a number of campaigns for message ads, um, a, good, a good benchmark for us is around five rand, four rand, nothing more than that. And then if, if it's obviously going higher than that, there's other variables that might be affecting yeah. the campaigns. And it's all dependent on industry, obviously. Yes, yeah, so um, each industry will have different benchmark. I don't have the industry no, specific no, ones on the on or top of my head, but generally we're looking around five, four and uh, messaging reply. And I mean, in essence, also people need to understand that consumer brands will do better in terms of paid ads when it yeah. comes to driving people into Messenger. Absolutely. Um, you know, B2B is quite difficult just purely because you're finding needles in a haystack. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that can get quite difficult, but B2C, you know, the, the, the costs are much less. Sometimes, geez, you know, if you're doing very well, it's two rand. Um, and I mean, it's. I think the the other thing is, you know, the fact that it it's it can get relatively cheap because of the fact that remember people are opening up on the platform itself, so there's less friction. I'm not sending them to another website, so you, you'll find that 
you might even find that sometimes your your traffic ads taking them to a website is actually more than getting somebody into your messenger. Why? Because there's an extra step that needs to happen and and now they're going off the platform. But because the people are already on the platform um, and they don't necessarily have to go anywhere else, then that makes it very attractive to run message ads because of the fact that that then translate, can translate into lower costs for advertising. That's interesting because essentially if the average visitor to your site is costing you five rand a landing page view, let's say five rand a click, and messenger ads is costing you five rand a subscription, the question is, what, is, what do you want as a brand? Do you want someone to visit your site and bounce off, knowing that two out of 100 people will probably want to inquire or get your product or service because the average conversion rate is about 2% or 1% to 2%? Or would you want to get people into your database at five rand and have the opportunity to further communicate to them and further educate them about what makes your brand unique and what else do you have to offer and essentially communicate maybe if you have an offer or a deal or a special. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of companies, you know, the, this, is, this is why I always say it's important to do as much research as possible to try and put things in perspective for yourself so you can make the best decisions. And any topic in life, Politics, um, marketing, business, uh, you know, anything, religion, like essentially you need to always ensure that you do some of your own research and that you, you know, you always, always speak to experts so that you can essentially get, on a, get to a level where you can put things in perspective for yourself and decide what's best for your business, what's best for your uh, life, what's best, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely, so, yeah, yeah. So here, the, the, the interesting thing is like it will cost you the same amount of money to get someone to your site versus getting someone into your database. But there's a lot more value in getting someone in your database than just having someone visit your, your website and dropping off. Yes, yes. And I, I mean, I like that you obviously, you know, explained it that way as well because we wouldn't, people wouldn't necessarily know that, oh, is that what the different could be the difference between you know sending someone to my website versus sending someone to Messenger because I could actually build brand in Messenger more than I can just sending someone to a site and then they bounce off and that's the end of the story. So you're absolutely right. Like there's way more value in having someone respond via Messenger and you having them in your ecosystem, which you can then directly communicate to them versus just sending them to a site where they look at some information, but there's nothing for them or there's nothing for them to be able to engage with really that might be able to, you know, show your brand a very different light if you could have them in Messenger um, at the end of the day, yeah? There are. So that's quite interesting. All right. So let's go back to the, the paid versus organic side. So we've talked about the paid side. ManyChat has something called uh, growth tools. And one of those growth tools then would be you mentioned that the JSON uh, objective, which is then your Facebook ad objective, all right? Yes. So J if you go into many chat and if you go to growth tools, the menu I think is on the left-hand side. You should yeah. see growth tools there. Um, what's going to happen is there's an option called JSON and that's the one, that we're, the one that you were referring to saying like, if you are not growing your database organically, uh, you know, and not at the rate that you would ideally want to, have a look at the JSON ad objective because that will allow you to run ads and immediately push people into Messenger while storing you know, them on the platform and in your database. Yes, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the objectives that you can choose from in terms of growth tools are mostly organic stuff. That is correct. The, the, there's a lot of options there available to you. Uh, one of them is also, that one's actually specifically for your website. I don't know if you've ever seen it, I don't know if anyone's seen the, the chatbot tool that you're allowed to embed on the website, but it actually takes you back to Facebook. Um, so that's also, it's also considered a growth tool because what it's doing, if you think about it, is if, you, if I put on my website, it's a little chat, and you engage with that chat, and it opens up in, in um, Facebook, it's now growing your database because now that person is actually a subscriber according to Facebook. The moment someone engages with a bot, it's actually that you become a subscriber automatically. But that is also a growth tool because now people are, the numbers are starting to grow. If you were to look into your me Facebook Messenger, the numbers start growing because of the fact that people are actually engaging with your bot on your website, but they're coming obviously into ManyChat. So it's growing your database. The nice thing about ManyChat is that if you use a chat tool, 
that you're paying for, essentially you might be able to avoid those costs and just use ManyChat because ManyChat allows you to add a chat feature onto your site. And the benefit of having ManyChat as a chat tool on your site is that that person who sends you a message is then part of your direct marketing list on Messenger. Yes. Um, versus having a chat tool where someone messages you and doesn't give you the email or contact number that you need in order to communi- continue communicating with them and then leave. There are some other growth tools from many chats for perspective. And I think, um, you know, there's the pop-up, I think. What else is there? Yeah, obviously we mainly just use to grow databases. So most of it is just the JSON that we use. Um, but they are, a lot of it is the uh, ones for the website that you can obviously embed there. Um, there is also one, I think it's for, uh, it's a checkbox. But again, that's also for your website. So it's mainly just your website and actually just um, the, the the Facebook ads. Remember, you can connect this to your, your Facebook page. So if you did want to grow that way, I think we already touched on it. The fact that what you'd be able to do is one of those options just allows you to then um, connect it to your Facebook page and that is going to be its own growth tool yes. in itself. Yes. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think the main, the three, the, the two main ones that we generally use is just for the Facebook ads and then it may be for the website as well to, in order to grow those uh, data subscribers. Sorry. The, the chat feature. Yeah. that's. So yeah, I think in essence, um, there's another one that we use for giveaways and I know um, Melissa loves using this in terms of the clients that she works with for for giveaways, and that's called the comment to messenger feature. Yeah, so the comment to messenger feature is essentially an ability for you to col- uh, collect data if that's what you wanted. So, for example, let's say you were running a giveaway as you've mentioned, then what would happen is if someone were to comment on your giveaway, let's say that was part of your, you know, your, your, your one of the questions that you wanted to, uh, people to, or one of the actions you want people to take in order to enter. So it's like comment below on why you want this giveaway. So the moment someone comments on why they want the giveaway, automatically, uh, ManyChat would be able to pick up that somebody has commented you can also specify if they comment with specific keywords. So not just saying, I want it because, you know, it looks cool. But let's say you wanted specific keywords that would um, be more of valuable to you in terms of capturing someone as someone who's really interested in winning something. You can actually specify certain keywords and only after they use certain keywords will then that uh, messaging bot automatically open up Messenger for them and then they can engage with that uh, specific message to then say, hey, thanks for responding. Um, we, we hope that you would, we hope that you win this giveaway. We just need a few details to capture your, um, your information so that you're entered into the competition and then the bot can actually capture like an email or a number and then they click submit and then there you go. Bob's your uncle. You've got somebody who's interested in uh, in the competition. Now you've just captured their details. That's really cool. And I think sometimes that could potentially even be cheaper than getting someone or running a, a paid ad in terms of JSON well, or whatever. It is a competition. <laughs> so yeah. Definitely, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's cheaper also because I, from the past experience, we get a lot of engagement on these competitions. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of incentive. Yes. So essentially also the quality of the people that enter might not be the exact quality that you would want in order to you know sell your products or services to because most of them are just there to get free stuff um but again if someone is interested in your product at free they might be interested in your product if they had to pay for it at a discount so there's a there's a bridge that you can gap and i want to talk about giveaways quickly um i find in my opinion that most brands just don't know how to execute giveaways on social media um and this is obviously not the podcast for giveaways maybe we can do a podcast specifically for giveaways but my my feeling is that brands understand that, hey, I want to get brand awareness at a low cost. Let's give something away so that people can obviously like and share and then we get free impressions and we get free reach, which is great. But that is only temporary. So essentially, if you are doing a like and share this post in order to win, that giveaway 
or that value that you're getting is literally temporary, temporary to the extent of you know when the giveaway stops. Because when the giveaway stops, what do you have to show for for anything? Just you've got a couple of people who've seen your logo, your brand, and they're not going to remember it because today it's so noisy that you need to see a brand like 20, 30, 40 times before you actually start recognizing them uh, for who they are and what they do. So one of the things that I usually advise, and I don't know if you agree, but from my side, I was like, look, use a, a feature like this in terms of mini chat or maybe drive someone to a landing page, which I'm more obviously skilled on. You guys will probably more, be more skilled in terms of the messaging side of it. But I say like drive someone, host the, the, the giveaway on your on your website and drive people to your website because there's going to be a portion of people who then actually take a look at who you are because now they're already in that ecosystem. So yes, there are going to be people that just look at the landing page, enter and leave, but there are going to be a portion of people who want to browse around and see what you're all about. And not just that, but if they leave their email address, the other thing is that again, now you start owning that database, you start owning that data. So now you're building your house and you're not just renting on the platform anymore. And I think that's one of the, the things I wanted to talk about is that people need to get out of this mindset of just running like and comment and, and, and share kind of like initiatives in terms of giveaways on, on Facebook, but more so like how can I leverage this product? If you're giving away something of value of a thousand, two, three, four, five thousand rand, that's a lot of money for a lot of companies. So how can you get the most amount of value out of it? And you can do that by leveraging a strategy where you actually drive people to the landing page, capture the emails and potentially something like ManyChat where you actually driving people into a messenger list. I don't know if you agree. No, I, I do. I think to even add on to that is the fact that, you know, people do that, uh, you know, a competition and they also just, that's it. That's, that's where it ends, right? But that's not what you want. Imagine you've got a thousand people that entered into the giveaway. What next? One, two, maybe you had five winners, great. But then it stops there. But that's not necessarily what you want. You, you, you've now got people in messenger who are sitting there, a thousand of them. Yes, you've chosen the five winners, but guess what? You can now actually continue to engage these people. You know, every time we try and run or oh, we run a giveaway, I always like to say, we should also have something post giveaway. I.e., even if it's, hey, here are the five lucky winners, congratulations to, you know, so-and-so. But we know that not everyone could have won this because we can only choose five winners. However, because you entered into our competition, we'd love for you to take 10% off or 20% off uh, one of our items that we have on store for you to essentially experience a bit about the brand and the product that we actually sell. Then in Messenger, you can direct direct that traffic to the website, give somebody a code that where they can at least get 20% off and experience the product itself. Because essentially that's that's what you want to do is Yes, you've gotten all these people, but you want them to now feel like they can be a part of something else. Yes, they're not winners, but by giving them a discount, kind of, you want to make them feel like they can still be winners. It's just that it's in a different form. But you can then direct that traffic to the website. Yes, there's, some of them will take the 20% off, some of them might not. But at least you can still be able to drive that traffic to your site to learn more about, you know, you as you mentioned about the brand, what it really stands for. And you don't even have to stop there. Because you've got people in your database now, it's like, okay, we've got these thousand people. What can we potentially be doing now to engage them further? Maybe we can do some broad, a broadcast or two and find out what pe if people would be actually be interested. Maybe some of them don't even know our brand. Like literally, they just signed up because they saw a product that they thought was cool, but they never, and because you ran it in Messenger and you just captured their details, remember at the end of the day, you never took them anywhere else. So they actually don't know much about your brand. Now is the opportunity to take those 1,000 people and start educating them on the brand. Start sending them messages about, you know, what the brand stands for. Um, in addition to maybe giving them a 20% off so that they can experience the product that you have on offer. So that's another opportunity that can actually, you know, exist for brands. But I don't think a lot of them do anything post-competition. And that's where, you know, things fall flat. They've paid for 1,000 entries. but there's no real return because you're also not doing anything to the to the to those subscribers that you've just uh, attained. No, for sure, you're hitting the nail on the head, and I think essentially th that's also the biggest difference between ManyChat or Chat Fuel and all these instant messaging platforms that you can leverage versus just doing it on Facebook. Um, and that's one of the things that why you want to consider connecting 
many chat uh, in order to build up the database. Okay, right. So now we've talked about um, getting someone into the database. There's a paid way, organic way. Uh, the organic way we've mentioned, you know, there's pop-ups and all kinds of stuff that you can add to your site, chat features, Facebook comments. Um, obviously, if someone messages your page, they automatically go in. The paid side, obviously running normal ads, just prompting people to send your brand a message. There needs to be some form of incentives, uh, you know, and I think you can't just run an ad saying, send us a message. Like, you need an offer, honestly. <laughs> always need a hook. You need something. Um, otherwise, nobody, then you're going to be like, oh, these things don't work. This is, you know, you can't just say, hey, buy my product. Yeah. Um, send a message if you want to buy my product. <laughs> you know, why? Why should I buy it? Give me something. Is it, is it, are you going to give me 20% off? Am I going to, is it a buy one and get one free? Is it, you know, like there's got to be something, a unique selling point. And I think this is, yeah, this is always a discussion we have with, with a lot of uh, clients with regards to what is the unique selling point. It's great to run ads and it's great to run these fe Facebook Messenger campaigns, but what is our hook? You know, because that's what really drives results at the end of the day. It's always about that offer and it's always about what is the other person getting. But, you know, we talk about benchmarks, four or five rand a messaging reply. Those messaging replies are not going to happen at four or five rand if you're doing the same thing, product selling like any other competitor. It's not going to happen. You actually then start seeing replies at 15 rand, 20 rand, 35 rand. Correct. So as much as we say it can be very cheap, but it is also about your offer. It is also about what you bring to the table for the individual. If it's not if it's not of value to them and if they don't see value in purchasing or engaging with your ad, then those costs are always going to be very, very high, unfortunately. Yeah, the one thing I always see is like brands always want to put their you know, image, or their content, their products in people's faces. But what they don't understand is that that's easy to do. Anybody can do that. The point is, is that you need to try and get people to open up their wallets and that is where the difficult part comes in. Like, yep. It's easy to just put your brand in someone's face but now what? What do I do with this brand? Like, Okay, I see it. Now what do I do? Like, mm -hmm. How do I know if it's for me? How do I know if it's something that's going to benefit my life? How do I know um, I can trust it? How do I know that I can try it and if I don't like it, I can give it back? How do I know that you're going to be able to ship it in, in 24-hour delivery? How do I know… You understand what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I think a lot of times people are like, yeah, I want to do some brand awareness. What is brand awareness going to do for your brand unless you actually have something to offer people? They want to do brand awareness, but deep down, they actually want to make sales. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I want to do brand awareness. Like I want to help. Like we all are doing it in order to feed our own families. Let's be honest. And you can't say that to the public. You can't be like, hey, I want you to buy my product because I want to get a bigger house and I want to be able to retire comfortably when I'm 60. Um, maybe you can. Maybe it's a strategy we should try and see what happens. But I think, in essence, there needs to be a bit of a a bit of a bridge between your selfish needs and the client's selfish or the customer's selfish needs. And that gap essentially is, I'm trying to actually add value to your life in some way, shape, or form by creating something that's different. Now you need to articulate that so that so that the individual can actually go, oh, okay, well, this is new. Yesterday, funny enough a recruitment agency phoned us like they do every single day. And obviously I'm head of recruiting and obviously that falls on my plate. So it's a matter of speaking to me and I was like, hey, how can I help? She's like, no, I'm a recruiting agency. So I said, thank you so much for the call. I don't want to waste your time. I know you have a lot of people, other people to phone. I would just want to say with respect, um, we haven't used a recruiting agency in the past. We're not planning on using one in the future. This is how we do our recruiting and I kind of like laid it out. I said, we have a very unique culture. Here's why. And I said, however, it doesn't mean that I want to cut you off. I want to understand what makes you unique, what interesting features or what interesting service offerings do you guys have that makes you unique so that I can understand whether I should be open-minded enough to give you an opportunity to come to us and, and explain what you can offer. Her words to me was, what do you mean with unique features or unique service offerings? I was like, well, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know what – you need to tell me what's unique about your your business. He's like, we've been in business for 32 years. So it obviously means that we know what we're doing. 32. No, it means that you know how to keep your lights on. It doesn't mean that you're actually necessarily – uh, an amazing company. Like a lot of companies have been in business for a lot of years. They're not, yep. not necessarily amazing companies. But nonetheless, I think <laughs> the point I was trying to make there is like people don't know how to articulate 
what makes their companies unique and they don't necessarily understand that. It's all about the hook. It's all about the mm-hmm. offer, especially when it comes to direct response marketing. All right, so we're moving on. So we've basically talked about everything up until the point of getting someone into the list. You've touched on the fact that there's so much more that you can do once someone has entered your database. Things that you can't do just through Facebook. You need, obviously, a software tool to do this for you. You've mentioned sequences earlier. I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole because I wanted to save it for now because once people have a a bit of a, a foundation and an understanding of how the platform works. So someone has come into your list. You've now spoken about giveaways and uh, there's added stuff that you can do. So maybe just explain how those features work. If there's someone listening who want to go do this themselves, um, how do you go about setting like a, you know, a post giveaway interaction? How do you go up? Where do you go mini chat? What do you call it? Walk us through that. Yeah. Essentially what sequences are is it's a, it's a, it's a feature that allows you to be able to communicate to the people that have interacted with you and take them down certain journeys. Um, If it's an education journey about your brand, you can set up a sequence and you can call it education sequence. And in that sequence, you can now set up day one, intro to Gilbert's swag apparel. apparel. <laughs> day, and then you can say, you can specify on day one, I'm going to send them information about Gilbert's swag apparel. Then day two, I'm going to send them a video clip about Gilbert, what what makes Gilbert swag's apparels unique. Day three, I might talk about what certain um, products or what certain materials we use in our products and how they're created and how, you know, the, the apparel is created, we, where we source our materials from and et cetera, and et cetera. So I can set up days mes- and, and messages associated to those days and I can set them up when I want them to get sent. Um, I can set them up in such a way that if someone takes a specific action, then something, depending on how they act or react, sorry, I can then give them a specific response. So if I sent out a message on day one and you clicked learn more, let's say I had two buttons. One was learn more and the other one was I'm not interested. So if you click learn more, then you um, a message will follow up and it will actually give you more information. But if you clicked I'm not interested, then I can tag you as not interested in being in mm. education series, for example. And then it means that I will not receive any more educational content because I can now exclude people that I have tagged if they have clicked, I'm not interested. So you can almost like segment your audience yes. basically in terms of tags. You can literally say, if someone clicks to learn more about a product, you can say, tag this person as interested, interested in products. Yes. So whenever you had like a 10% or a 20% of promotion, you don't want to just spam everybody with yeah. that. You probably want to give that to people who are more, uh, I would say, prone to react to it. Yes. People who are more interested in it. Uh, people are more contextual to this actual offer that you have. Absolutely. So if someone has expressed interest in a product, ManyChat can allow you to tag that person. I'm assuming that's also quite easy to use. Um, I, I mean, I, you would obviously know better than me. But then essentially it's a matter of tagging them and if you had to do then a broadcast, you can then go and find all the people that you've tagged and then basically just communicate with them that the offer that you now have. Absolutely. So to maybe paint the picture again, people have entered the competition. I've got five, I've got a thousand people that are now sitting there. This is post comp. I want to start some kind of uh, education drive. I want to start some kind of nurturing. I want people to learn more about my business and my brand and why I'm unique and why I'm special and what I have to offer. I am then going to go into ManyChat. They, on the left panel, there's a part that talks about flows and sequences. You essentially just want to choose sequences just for simplicity's sake. Sequences allows you then to set up certain messages that will follow up depending on when you want to send them and, of course, what type of content you want to send people. So if I say to myself, okay, I want to do an education drive for these thousand people that are sitting in my database at the moment, let me go set up a sequence. And in that sequence, you can start specifying day one, as I mentioned, day one, uh, education about the brand. 
when you start your day one, it will and you're pro, and you're setting up your message. For example, you are allowed to specify who you want the who you want to send this to. So you can specify the thousand people that entered the competition. Mm, so okay. if I go back, because now you're probably asking, like, how does it know that these were the competition uh, entrants? When you have set up your initial competition and someone did respond, that response as an uh, um, entry to the competition could be tagged. So you could have tagged that individual as comp entry. Okay. Okay. So that now when you're actually setting up a sequence and you're specifying who you want the sequence to go to, you're going to send it to people that have been tagged comp entry so that it knows that, oh, it's the thousand people that you want me to, you want this to get sent to. Because you might have other people in there. It's just that you want to make sure that you are segmenting and differentiating, not that other people that never entered are now getting, you know, education series afterwards. I have an analogy in my head and it's probably <laughs> not the best one, but I grew up on a farm. So it's almost like tagging your kettle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's like uh, we grew up on a farm. and I mean, I, I grew up on a plot, but my Oma had a farm and I, and I used to visit her often. And, uh, you know, you would just tag certain kind of kept kettle and you would put some of them in this camp and some of them in that camp. And ideally, that's yeah. kind of like what you can do with ManyChat. Like you basically segment and tag and go nuts. Yeah, absolutely. So with your farm animals, then <laughs> <laughs> once you tag them. Um, uh, but anyway, so uh, once you tag people, uh, you, uh, they comp entry, then you're setting up your first message, then you can specify that, okay, I want this message to get sent today. I wanted to say A, B, C, D, and I wanted to only get sent to comp entry individuals, and I wanted to get sent anytime between 8 in the morning to between 8 and 11 because I believe that's when most people are engaged, they're awake, and they're most likely looking on their phones. So that would be the good time to maybe send it because the open rates will be high at that time. So you can send out that first message. And in that first message, you can then spec you can you're gonna have different options. So as I mentioned, you can either have someone say, click learn more, for example, or click I'm not interested. If they click learn more, you can tag those individuals to say, great interested in 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 uh, brand or if they click i'm not interested then great i'm going to tag those as not interested in brand and then i can s set up a, another message um it, you'll see once you're setting this up it's all in the left panel it will then say uh set up an, a new message you click new message to follow up basically and then in the second message now you're going to be able to specify when you want that to get sent so let's say after the first message and someone clicked learn more I want this message now to get sent three days later to the people that have obviously uh, clicked learn more and are now tagged interested in brand. And I want a day two message to for them to, let's say, watch a video. Now, a 50-second video, for example, just a very short video. Then what you can actually do is, depending on how you want to set this up, but I'm just thinking of my own analogy here. Let's say I send you a video about the brand, okay, it explains about the brand. And then I can, underneath that video, say, view website or still not interested. <laughs> and then um, what will now happen is I'm trying to get to maybe like a second level of interest because I want you to obviously view the website, right? But for those that don't go and click to view the website, they can potentially say, I'm not interested now because they maybe are really not interested. They went to your website. Yeah, they, they had a look or they, sorry, they clicked learn more and you gave them that information, but maybe they weren't actually as interested as you thought. So now in the second uh, message that they get, they're now actually saying like, I'm actually not interested. Sorry, I obviously read what you gave me, but I'm really not interested. So now you're trying to get to a second level of interest. But if they click uh, view website, then you know, oh, Interest, interested even more and then you can tag those individuals and then you can continue now setting up day three messages day four day five and it can continues and you can specify depending on how someone has acted um, with, with regards to a response so one of the easiest ways is to just set up those buttons because when they click those buttons that is when you can tag somebody and specify and say okay because they click this button 
I'm going to tag them as interested because they click that button. I'm going to tag them as not interested and put and you know take them out of this the sequence. And then you can continue building out like different messages and to send on different days. Um, and obviously, depending on whether someone clicked or not, you can take them out of a segment or take them out of your sequence or add them to the sequence and just continue on with messaging and carries on that way. I'm thinking about another example here as you were talking. So. Essentially, let's use Gilbert Swag as an example. You stocking all kinds of apparel. Someone comes into your messenger um, just purely because of the fact that they had a question and it says something like, what can we help you with today? What are you interested in or what do you want to see? You can then ask shirts, pants, shoes. Someone clicks shoes. Now you can tag that part, a person as someone who is interested in product item shoes basically. And the next time you run a promotional offer, you can go and filter everybody who's interested in shoes and send them that sh the, the, the shoe offer that you specifically have. So yes. if you have a specific shoe offer, now you can go and target everybody who's interested in shoes, which means you'll have a contextualized, personalized offer for people who's interested, already expressed that they're interested in, in what you have to say for that specific category of your business. So services businesses might be able to use that as well. What kind of services are you interested in? And then where the sequences could come in is that if someone says I'm interested in shoes, the first sequence could be something like, um, cool, let me show you all the kind of shoes that we have available. And then the next day you can say something like, did you know that this is how we manufacture our shoes? Like yes. we actually go as the founder, I travel to five different countries and I always look for the best quality yeah. fabric and I look for the best stitcher I can find, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is how we yeah. do the soles. And now this guy's got like a, a bit of an emotional connection with the brand. He's like, whoa, exactly. I didn't know that. This is pretty cool. That almost starts to justify the price of the product because now I understand what kind of mm. effort goes in there. And I think on, to touch on the sequences as well, and I think you guys mentioned this with one of our clients, uh, you know, with one of the masterminds we've had is that you want to... There's two types of decision makers, logic and emotion. So ideally, people who are, think logical and people who think emotional, like or think you know emotionally. And ideally, you either one of those two. Majority of people make decisions based on emotion, according to studies. So then you could potentially say, look, for example, nutrition brands. If you were selling nutrition products and someone wanted to inquire about a whey protein and the logical approach would be like this is the amount of of whey protein that's in the tub so let's say it's a kilogram or, or or three kilograms or whatever and the price is 700 bucks and essentially what's happening now is you can work out what the serving costs are of mm. each single serving so if someone takes a whey protein shake or a meal replacement shake they are technically replacing a meal so you can now divide the cost of the product by the amount of servings that you have available and you're going to get an amount per serving. And then you can say, it's going to be like, let's say, for example, whey protein, 3 kg whey, 600 bucks when I was still in the industry. I think it worked out to like 11 or 12 rand a serving, I can't remember. I'm not going to do the math now. But you can say, look, this is costing you 12 rand a meal. Where on the world are you going to get 12 rand a meal? Like, you know, where yeah. do you, in the world does that actually happen today? So yes, we know that it's a big once-off investment, but you're actually saving a lot of money for the month if you're going to be using this as a meal replacement just purely because of the fact that it's the cheapest meal that you can buy. And then they go, oh, well, that makes sense. That's logical. And then from an emotional perspective, maybe on day three, so day one, you talk about the brand, who you are and how you source your materials. Day two, you talk about the logical approach on what, why the price is actually the price. And day three, you could do something emotional where you're like, imagine you actually use this nutrition program that we have available and these products that we've now, that you've interested in, you know, Sally used it and, and she lost like six kgs and look how awesome she looks and you can almost look like that. Now it becomes a bit of emotion. And then I think you guys use the last one as an example, as a testimonial yes. where you kind of like build a bit of trust and credibility because now I know who you are. There's a logical approach. There's an emotional approach. That is all, all those boxes are ticked. But now I want to know if I can actually trust this brand. And, and that's ideally where a testimonial would come in and say like John, Sally, and this guy, and that guy, and this girl all brag about how awesome you know, the products are and how much it's helped them, yes. which now is creating a sense of credibility and trust. And hopefully now you've ticked all the boxes. Mm. And then on the, another thing would be probably in the sequence side, 
if they still haven't converted into a customer, maybe you can incentivize them with that 10, 20% off. Hey, dude, like, listen, yeah, that's like, we've, we've tried everything now. <laughs> Here's 20% off uh, if you're interested for 24 hours only. Yeah, that that that's usually like almost like the last row. Like, oh, okay, I've taken them through how many days? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've nurtured them now up until this point, and um, usually that that offer there is just like a twenty percent off, you know, thirty percent off, just to try it. Because sometimes, literally, that might just be the only thing that's stopping them at this stage. Is that yes, they've you know you've told them a lot about the brand and they've understood it now, and they're now emotionally connected and they they're excited, but. Still, you might find that maybe it's just a thing of the price just still is a bit high and it it hasn't necessarily, you know, as much as you try your best to give as much value in, in helping them understand why, you know, they're, they're buying a product at the price that they're seeing it. Sometimes it's just all it takes is just that 20% off for them to at least just try that product, you know, just that first um, product. And because, you know, after that, they'll definitely be hooked. But it's sometimes it, that's all it takes. And it actually does have quite good results from uh, what we've done with a lot of our clients. So that's really all you need at the end of the day. But don't, I guess, start it off with just, uh, here's a 20% off now. But I like what you're doing in, in terms of like having different sequences, nurturing them, uh, showing them the catalog, showing them how it's made, um, creating that emotional connection. Then if all else fails, you, you go in for the kill and just give them an offer. And that tends to convert because of obviously the nurturing that you've done prior to that. Yeah, and I think that's a classic example of leveraging your sequences again, which is not something that you can do unless you've actually had the software connected yeah. to yeah. the Facebook page. So to end things off, um, what is there some practical tips in terms of best practices uh, You know, when it comes to Messenger uh, specifically Facebook Messenger and these advertising, uh, I would say, best practices. Maybe share that with us and uh, we can round off. Unfortunately, um, there are a few things that one must take care of in terms of policies, especially. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is you can't just go and start sending out broadcast messages whenever you feel like it. The regulations and policies always change regularly. And this is because... Uh, for the past couple of, I think, I would say months, years, actually, a lot of people have uh, marketers and people that are now obviously marketing on Facebook Messenger have sort of abused the platform and have been pretty much spamming individuals. It's almost like email, you know, you just keep sending out message blasts um, because you have a database and because you have people that you can send to. So what's happening is that a lot of people, users, have been complaining because you got to understand that this is a platform for the users, not a platform for, it wasn't built for businesses. It wasn't built, oh yes, I'm going to, we're going to create Facebook Messenger for businesses. No, it's, it's, Facebook is creating this for a user's experience because that's who their, uh, you know, it focuses on. It's, it's mainly for the users because if the users disappear, well, the businesses also wouldn't have necessarily the incentive to want to be on the platform because there's nobody there to even market to in the first place. But it's grown off of the fact that there's, you know, 2 point something billion people on Facebook and they want to keep them happy. They want to keep them there. But the thing is, in order to keep them there, they need to kind of strike a balance between people that are advertising on their platform or, or using it as a, a, mis, a marketing tool. They need to try and strike that balance to make them happy, but also to make the main user happy. Yeah, so here's the point that I'm actually uh, thinking of right now is that people need to understand that email is basically very different to Facebook Messenger because Facebook is one business. Email is not one business. Mm. So you can't just go to an email company and be like, hey, email company, I'm upset about getting these emails. I'm like, well, that's not us. That's your problem. Like, who did you get those mails from? No, I'm with this company server and I'm using MailChimp and I'm with Amazon or whatever. Essentially, that is the, the control, the environment is a lot more complex than Facebook Messenger because Facebook Messenger is one company. And if someone has got a bad experience with Facebook Messenger, they can complain to one company. And I think the other thing I want to mention is people need to understand that the engagement rates on Messenger is literally through the roof right now. It's dying down slowly like anything else because as marketers, like you've mentioned, we ruin everything for everybody <laughs> because wherever there's attention... We're going to squeeze our way in there. Yep. <laughs> Best believe that. <laughs> We're going to squeeze our way in there and try and, you know, suck it up as much as we can. Yeah. Um, 
But I think some of, if we had to put things in perspective, email versus messenger, like the average email open rate would be around 15, 20%. If you're getting 20%, you're doing a good job. And if we look at messenger, the e- the average open rates are sitting at like 75, 80%, if not higher, yes. depending on how qu- the quality of the audience. So now a lot more people are engaged in messenger. But not just that, I've seen click-through rates, and I'm sure you've seen this as well, on email, the average click-through rate will be 1%, where in Messenger, I don't know what it is these days. I'm going to ask 40, you now. For what? 40%. That's crazy. I'm um, serious. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that so just gets, gives, you yeah. an, uh, gives you an idea of how people are using the platform and they're a lot more engaged. So it mm. means that they're going to have a lot more complaints if they're not happy. Exactly. And, you know, just to go back to the tips and practical t- um, tips that you can take out of this is the fact that if you are thinking of doing this this Facebook Messenger and using a tool... You do need to be, you need to understand what the policies are. At currently, if you were to go and do a broadcast to a thousand people, unfortunately, you can only send a broadcast to a thousand people if they have engaged with your bot in the last 24 hours. So, meaning, mm. out of a thousand people, if only a hundred of them engaged in the last 24 hours, only a hundred of them will actually see the message that you're going to send to them. And are there ways around that? <laughs> yes, they are. There's some um, the, pay, the paid market. way. Oh, is it? Yeah. So they've introduced uh, a paid version. Well, yeah, a paid segment. And essentially the paid segment is, okay, if you want to send out a broadcast, mainly it's for if you're trying to promote um, your product. Okay, so this is mainly if you're trying to promote a product. There are certain, there's about four specific um like categories that you can put your message under. So there's things like post event confirmation, uh, status confirmation. Uh, I think it was account update and account information. And there's another one I can't remember on top of my head. But it's essentially saying if, let's say, somebody uh, enrolled into, I don't know, maybe you had a course that you had them enroll, then you wanted to message them. Then that message, just to, that just to confirm that they've registered, you can put it under post event confirmation, for example. So then that will message will go out perfectly fine and you'll be okay. However, if you decided that I want to try and give someone a, a discount on a certain product and you can see that your tag is not there, if you were to send that, Facebook looks like literally they look at your messages. They they are able to see what messages are being sent. And what happens is, actually it will be ManyChat because ManyChat is its own platform. So ManyChat has, it's, it's on their responsibility to make sure that people using the platform aren't sending out messages they're not supposed to be in certain tags. So what happens is that ManyChat will flag you and say, listen, you're trying to do a promotional broadcast here, but you're not allowed to do that. The only way you can do that is to pay uh, in terms of uh, run a paid message campaign. And that is the only way you'll be able then to reach the thousand people if you actually ran a paid or a sponsored message campaign in mess- in, in ManyChat. But now you actually have to pay for that, unfortunately. So it never used to be there. Well, yeah, I think we've been obviously doing this for quite some time. But I think it's something that started getting incorporated a couple of months ago where we're now having to pay if we are to promote certain services and because we're trying to actually sell. So there it's become very, very strict. And you need to be careful not just to go into um, Facebook Messenger and start broadcasting because you will start getting flagged. But also what what will happen is that if you are to try and send a message, there's usually a caution, like there's there's a, it's like an, I think it's also an automated um, system that is actually able to pick up whether you're trying to write a, sales message or whether you're just trying to update people on certain information. So you do need to be very wary that you can't just go into Facebook Messenger and think that you're going to send out uh, any message that you feel like it because it has become strict. There are certain rules that you have to follow. And that's all because of, like you mentioned, you know, we've, we've uh, marketers and, and everybody else has kind of messed things up for us. So it's no, it's no longer free. It's no longer free reign. It used to be, but it's no longer free reign. And you do need to understand that there are certain policies. The, the policies are right there for you. Like you, you won't miss them. <laughs> that's the thing. When you're in Messenger, actually say, before you send this message, have you read our terms and conditions? 
I do advise everyone to at least read those terms and conditions because if you do not follow them, your page will actually get blocked and you will be banned from running, I mean, from using a platform like Messenger in the future. But now tell me, I know that we've got, I don't know if we have, but I've seen the messages that go out and I look at the reports. We send out, obviously for most of our clients, we handle that service. How do we get it right to send the message to the whole database? Legally, because I don't think one of our accounts have been flagged. Or what do we what do we do? Like, can we give some people but, some juice? But now, so a lot of our um, content that we do send out, it's it's educational. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's why we get, we are, we're able. So that's to the strategy. Send. Yes. So if you can, if you're sending educational content, that's fine. But it's only it only becomes a problem when you try and constantly send out these sales messages. Mm. That's when it becomes a problem. So is it safe to say that? The big focus should be adding value to your yes, database at all times. That's, that's essentially what it is, um, and and I mean this is why you want you also. I mean we've talked about mm. the the you know the why you'd want to be using Messenger is because it can also help build brand and you know you educate people. Um, and essentially that's what I, I think Facebook has tried to do now is this should be a platform where people are. You are sending out engaging content. Well, they're strengthening their out. relationships. Exactly. Almost. Okay. So it's not just purely sell, sell, sell. It's listen. How can you add value to people's yeah. life? Tell them about the brand and tell them why you're unique. But also try and engage them. This yeah. is what you need to be doing. You need to be engaging people. Well, what I like about that is that that's just best practice for marketing in general. But they've just made it as a you know black and white. Yeah. These are the policies you need to follow them. Otherwise, yeah, because yeah, we because we always talk about adding value. Yeah. We always say. Don't just go out and try and stick your product in someone's face and be like, hey, look, if you buy it today, you get 10% off. On what? Why? Mm. Um, educate, add value, get people to understand, provide them with insight and uh, essentially they will end up making the best decisions for them and if that's your product, great. If it's not, you know, it is what it is. So, if you are planning on or thinking of using Facebook Messenger, I do suggest you come up with how are you going to use this platform to educate to add value and to build brand first before thinking of it as a direct sales channel. Mm. No, awesome, man. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for literally all the value and all the nuggets and and, and uh, value bombs that you've dropped. I really appreciate that. From our side, I want to end off. So basically for the last 13, well, actually longer, it took us 13 months to put all the content together for those watching. Um, Gilbert and I wrote a book called, uh, we had someone assist us with this, Leanne. Um, thank you, Leanne. She helped us put a book together, Adjust. Um, we have the e-version available and uh, Adjust is basically, and we have the hard copy available as well. Not on sale yet from next week, hopefully, if everything goes well. Uh, adjust the idiot's guide to understanding what the F is, is happening in advertising today. So this basically just covers top level uh, advertising today, what's kind of working, what's not working, why is it working. We really talk about uh, how advertising industries have changed, why it's changed, because I think it's important that you understand what's happening in the industry. And uh, that's kind of like what we have been focusing on for the last, I would say, 18 months. So from our side and Gilbert's side, grab a copy. It's free on our website if you want the e-version. It's free and uh, have a look. Go download it. If you want a hard copy, you're welcome to email me or reach out to us. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I think hopefully everyone finds a lot of value in that I just Love to hear your reviews and comments about it. And uh, yeah, go out and get it. All the best. Cheers, guys.